G'day guys and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. We are back for my final mock draft before the national draft. I am considering doing one in between day one and two if I think it's worth it. Um, but I did say a week ago I would probably do one prior to the actual draft as long as it was going to be different. And this one is different. For a start, I've tried to incorporate some live trades that we've heard rumors about, and then a couple of later ones which I think make sense to me, and I'll explain them as we go. But this draft is gonna be the entire draft. I have done, I think it's 56 picks. The entire 56 picks, I've tried to correctly plot um, how many picks each club is taking. And there's also some justification there for why there might be some later trades, which we'll get to. I think I have gotten the academy matching points thing generally right. And um, so in some cases, I'm just gonna skip over clubs at the end because they've run out of picks. But this one is, I've shaken it up quite a lot, uh, or at least in my opinion. Cal Toomey's Phantom Draft came out this morning and I read it, I was like, ooh, that's gonna be similar to what I was kind of thinking. And then I actually did mine and it's quite different. So Cal Toomey's does not incorporate live trades. I've had a crack and I could be off the mark with them, but it's made it a little bit fun. So this one is going to be an eyebrow raiser. That's right. This one will incite such a reaction in you that you will have an involuntary flexing of the eyebrow muscle in an upward direction and you're gonna be watching the draft like this. Wow, I'm a weird guy. But anyway, let's get into it. Before I do, if you could help me get to 24K subscribers, I'm within 90 of the magic mark and I set a goal of trying to get to 24K by the start of the draft and hopefully, that will, uh, we're within touching distance. So any help you can give in that space, that'd be great. And uh, before I get into it as well, I will be doing a live stream, at least for day one. We'll see about day two, but join in on the channel if you wanna follow along with me in real time. So we'll kick off the draft. And uh, in this case, I am going to start with a live trade that can happen at the start of the draft, not for pick one but uh, actually between the Brisbane Lions and the Gold Coast Suns. So this one is actually one that has been reported on by Cal Toomey. And Brisbane will trade pick 30 and 39 to the Gold Coast Suns for pick 24. So that will happen at the start of the draft. And let's get into the actual draft. With pick one, West Coast end up choosing Harley Reid. What a surprise. We knew that was coming and I don't see any live trades happening for pick one. At pick two, I'm gonna go again with Jed Walter being bid on here. Toomey has him being bid on at three, but I like him at two. I think he's the second best talent, so I'll just keep it there for now. Pick three, North Melbourne go with Colby McKercher and at pick four, they will get Zane Dersma as well. So a really good start to this, um, this draft where they have five first round selections. Really good best available talents there. Hawthorne. This is the first one where I think there's a little bit of doubt as to who they go. I think the way it's looking right now is it is they've probably decided on Nick Watson, the small forward out of Victoria, which leaves the Western Bulldogs at pick six to go Riley Sanders again. If I'm not mistaken, this is the same so far as my last, but I promise you it gets a little bit more juicy. So Sanders joins the Bulldogs, the Lark medalist. At pick seven, I again will have Gold Coast Academy bid for Ethan Reid from the Melbourne Football Club. Um, Melbourne would mind a ruck, so that's my justification. This is about right on talent. So Ethan Reid to the Gold Coast Suns, they match this bid. And Melbourne's first selection here is the most intriguing of the draft so far. Now, I had two options here. What would I pick versus what is kind of being reported at the moment? And also with a view to try and make this video a little bit creative. So in my opinion, I would go Daniel Curtin here. But there seems to be an increasing narrative that Melbourne have decided on Caleb Windsor. Now they need to pick Caleb Windsor here. He won't last to their second selection because the Giants are reportedly quite interested as well. So Melbourne have the choice here of going for Caleb Windsor now or missing out on him. So I've got the D's taking Caleb Windsor here at pick eight. Now, before anyone really roasts me, I do will point out this is also where Toomey had him. So I'm not the only one who is putting this forward. So the GWS Giants have missed out on Caleb Windsor. Now, West Coast has come knocking on the door. This is a I did this video yesterday talking about how this might happen. So for the uh, purposes of an exciting mock draft, I'm gonna say West Coast offer their future first round selection to GWS for pick seven. And well, what is now pick nine? And GWS, uh, there's no other aspects of this trade. In my opinion here, GWS hold the leverage. West Coast give up their future first round selection. Is that wise? I don't know. So West Coast are on the clock and they're gonna take Daniel Curtin. Is he good enough to justify potentially trading pick one next year? I suppose we'll all find out in due course. Geelong is on the board here and they're gonna take Nate Caddy. I think this makes sense for them. Uh, there, there is a link to the, the Caddy family, obviously in Geelong. They could use a key forward. They're obviously going through uh, list regeneration. 
So this is where I have my next live trade. Let me get it up here on my Google documents. So Adelaide, have reportedly had interest in trading up the draft order. Now, there's so many different reasons for why that could be. There's been two conflicting reports on who their target is. But I have got them trading pick 10 and 20 for Essendon's pick nine and something going back to Adelaide in the future. So let's call it either a round two or a round three. It could be a round three. The particulars of exactly what it is doesn't really matter for the purposes of this mock draft. But Adelaide want to move up one draft spot because they obviously, they are targeting Conor O'Sullivan, in my opinion. It's, it's probably going to be a key back. There is, there's is there been a suggestion it's Daniel Curtin they'd trade up for. So maybe this is null and void. But once you get into the, all the different possibilities of where this goes, I would never, ever finish this mock draft. So it's a steep price to pay for Adelaide. They give up pick 20, but there has been reported by Fox Footy that they're looking to condense their picks into two better ones. And they have to assess... Is it worth missing out on Conor O'Sullivan? Because I believe that Essendon would take Conor O'Sullivan if he was on the board at this selection. So I've got Adelaide taking Conor O'Sullivan at pick 11. They get their key defender and uh, there's some list balance there and they only have one selection for the rest of this draft. But they do get an extra second or third rounder, whatever you think it should be, for next year where they've got a father-son prospect. Um, so I think that kind of makes sense. So Essendon are back on the board here. They've only slipped down one spot. I suggested yesterday they might sl um, slide down and take Riley Hardiman, but they've only slid, slid down one spot and James Leake is still there. So that I'm saying that Essendon would take James Leake in this scenario. A better version of the same sort of player, generally. Then Melbourne, I'm going to bid on Jordan Croft. Um, why not? This is about his range. Western Bulldogs match the bid and jo Jordan Croft joins the Doggies. So Melbourne have their second selection now after taking Caleb Windsor. This one is based on a little bit of late mail. But apparently they've gone down to Esperance to meet Colton Falstrup one time before the draft. There's been a suggestion that they will reach for him at pick 14. It's not a massive reach. This is probably like the start of his range, perhaps a little bit before. And I do think he is a Melbourne style of player. Big, powerful, contested forward mid. So I think that makes sense. On the whole, is Windsor and Falstrup to the neutral observer the ideal outcome for Melbourne here? It, it, it does look a little bit funny on the eyes, but... Again, I'll point out, Cal Toomey had them taking the exact two, same two players. So this is where I have Sydney on the board for the first time in this year's draft, and I've got another live trade. So they had been reportedly looking to trade up into the top 10, but there's going to be no suitors. Adelaide had a better offer for Essendon. So there's also a bit of suggestion that they would trade back if they didn't trade forward. So I've got them doing a deal with North Melbourne here. North Melbourne give up what is currently live, pick 20 and 22, to move up to Sydney's pick 15, and Sydney give them a second rounder next year. So North Melbourne adds some collateral in next year's draft. They consolidate their two picks into an earlier pick because they want Will Green. And I think Sydney would take Will Green, the ruckman, if they had this pick still. But North Melbourne want to add a really good ruck, and Will Green is just that. So they take a little bit of a hit here, um, losing at pick 22 and 20. But they get Will Green and they get a second round of next year tied to Sydney. St Kilda on the board and this is where a bid I think will for Jake Rogers will come. No real inside knowledge. I think St Kilda, what they'd be looking for in this draft lines up with what Jake Rogers is. So that's about right, I think. It could be earlier than this. But now that he's been matched and goes to the Gold Coast Suns, this is where I have Darcy Wilson falling. And this has slid a little bit because there seems to be a belief that uh, Geelong, if they don't go caddy, Darcy Wilson is a viable option for them. I don't really see a scenario where they take Wilson over Caddy or O'Sullivan if, if there's both of those players are available, which in this mock they are. And I just feel like Wilson probably slides past the Ds, who um, obviously like Tholstrup, and the, the Roos probably want to go tall. So they slides a little bit to St Kilda, and that is probably exactly the sort of player St Kilda are looking for in this year's draft. So I think that's a great result for them. Adelaide are then on the board with their second and final selection. So they took O'Sullivan, they got their man, their key defender, they're going to exit the draft with this pick, and they're going to take Taylor Goad, 207-centimeter South Australian ruckman, who has uh, has a lot of fans that believe he could be a real top-end ruckman, and he's really bolted into first-round calculations. So if Adelaide want him, they got to take him here. Then Sydney enter the draft for the first time, having traded back down, and I will say they'll bid on a key defender in uh, Will McCabe from Hawthorne, the father-son match bid, and uh, the Hawks add Will McCabe to Nick Watson early in this draft, so they get their key defender which is nice. So then Sydney are on the board now. I've got them looking for need at this selection and perhaps a little bit of a reach, but I've got them taking Ollie Murphy, the key defender out of Victoria, 200 centimeters, and uh, was the MVP, I think, for Vic Metro in the national championships. I think this, this 
club's sleeping on this guy. I don't think he should slide into the late 20s, as some have suggested. <clears throat> so GWS, having traded their first selection and hold potentially pick one in the 2025 draft, they enter the draft properly now at pick 21. And this is where Riley Hardiman, I think, will go. Hardiman was a hard one to plot because I had him, you know, around that North Melbourne to Essendon sort of range. Essendon didn't trade down hard enough. Uh, and North Melbourne obviously traded those picks. And uh, yeah, it was a hard one to plot. But I think, I don't know really if, if this lines up with GWS's needs. But I think from a best available point of view, this is a great selection for the Giants. So then Sydney Net have the next pick. These are North Melbourne's picks. And I've got them taking Charlie Edwards, a player that they've been linked to. Having got their key defender prospect, uh, this one adds a little bit of balance to... Uh, well, they, they want to add some mids, but he's a very balanced midfielder. They are getting Caden Cleary in the second round, probably. But Charlie Edwards, I think, at, at pick 22 is good value. So I'm happy with that one. North Melbourne at pick 23, this is now their fourth selection. They will probably take five overall. So North fans, this isn't the end of your draft. I've got them taking a key defender and the one that they've been linked to is Ari Schoenmaker. There's a few options for them. Will Dawson was another one, but uh, Ari Schoenmaker out of Tasmania, huge raking foot. Um, well, his kick is large. His feet are probably, well, probably large. He's about 6'5". Um, anyway, yeah, they round out that, uh, that first round with uh, Schoenmaker, Will Green as the two tools, and obviously McKercher and Dersma. So Collingwood enter the draft, the, the premiers of this year. And I think they will probably go tall based on some limited research and some input from you guys as well. And they'll bolt on this guy called Will Dawson, who is a 200 centimeter sort of utility, but he's, he's probably settles as a key defender at the next level. So he has his draft stocks have really risen in recent times, and he could be a shout for North Melbourne's picks, uh, assuming they don't trade them. And uh, I think Collingwood will see this as uh, probably the best available tall based on the way things are going at the moment. So Essendon now hold Adelaide's pick and they have another selection here at pick 25. And they're gonna take Phoenix Goddard, a small forward from Victoria, whose stocks have really risen in recent times. I debated whether he goes to 21 to GWS where he's most publicly linked, but Riley Hardiman was unexpectedly available. So Essendon add a small forward to James Leake. Secure then take Western Bulldogs Academy player Luaman Lowell, a good quality small sort of running defender. Is this an area of strict need? I'm not too sure, but I think Luan Lowell goes around this range, and I think on you know in terms of the best available talent, he's around the mark. There has been suggested that he will go in the first round, and this technically is still the first round. So Carlton entered the draft for the first time at pick 27 now, and um, they will probably go based on media reports. Ashton Moyer, who I thought was going to slide. And then subsequently, there's been a lot of talk in the media about how that is probably not going to happen. So Ashton Moyer goes to Carlton. Carlton know that West Coast have the next pick, and that is another team that he has been linked to. So this is where West Coast fortuitously end up with Lance Collard. I've been talking about the prospects of him sliding in recent times. I've covered that heavily on this channel, and I don't think West Coast would let him slide any further than this. And I think we'd be very happy with that. So the Brisbane Lions now hold Gold Coast pick. Gold Coast, um, you know, obviously their other picks have been absorbed for the most part. They've still got one more academy player. But Brisbane traded up to get this pick, and I still think they'll go tall. And given their tendency to draft out of WA, um, I think they will certainly have a good scouting network in WA. And hence, I think Zane Sakastelsky would be a good selection for them as an athletic key defender who has played ruck, but probably settles as a key defender. Geelong then bid on Sydney's academy player in Caden Cleary. I think Geelong will be looking at young mids. They're looking at everything, but Caden Cleary around this range makes sense. A New South Welshman, about six foot, and uh, yeah, a good midfielder for Sydney to add. So that probably rounds out their draft with Edwards, Murphy, and Cleary as well. <clears throat> so that leaves you Geelong. They've taken Caddy. They, um, they don't necessarily need to go tall. They'll go best available. And Harry Demetier will slide, in my opinion, to pick 31. Pick 31, sorry. By the way, I don't know how closely you're paying attention. There's, there's a couple of sliders here that will probably slide a little bit further. I'm really mixing it up here. Harry Demetia makes sense. Big country boy to the Cats. And um, from a best available talent, they'd probably be surprised that he's here. Then Carlton with his sex sele second selection. Sex selection. Uh, they have 32, having taken Moyer. And this is where I think they might take the punt on to Giath, a running defender who is part of Hawthorne's Next Generation Academy, a good intercept player, very athletic and fast, adds some rebounds, very modern halfback. So I think that would appeal to them, even though, you know, is it an area of need right now? Doherty's kind of old. Doherty and um, Saad are both 30. 
So maybe this is a, a sort of um, transition plan, if that makes sense. Now we've got Richmond with their first selection at 33. And um, previously I've had them taking midfielders. I think they'll just go best available, whether it be tools. But I think the best available player from their point of view might be a small forward in Jack Deline from South Australia. This guy is super productive. He kicks lots of goals and has done for several years across many different levels. And I just don't know why he would be sliding any further than that. And I think Richmond would be delighted to pick him up here. Essendon then have their third and what I think will be their final selection. I think they're only taking three picks. So we'll get what happens to their fourth pick later. But I've got them taking Joel Frazier, a tall wingman whose stock seem to have risen a little bit in recent times. Very dynamic sort of player, hits the scoreboard, very big bodied. Adds something different, a point of difference to Essendon's, a point of difference to Essendon's midfield, which is arguably what they'll be considering when they're looking at midfield prospects. And that gives them a balanced draft of James Leake, Phoenix Goddard, and Joel Frazier. Collingwood will have their second selection at 35, and this is probably where they dip out. And again, I see them going tall. This time of forward, they'll probably take Logan Morris, an undersized key forward out of Victoria, and they'll bow out with Dawson and Morris, and I think they'll be happy with that. Fremantle will enter the draft at 36. Now, they're going to take a leap on a 26-year-old VFL player called Sean Manor. This is, um, this is pretty early for him. This is Fremantle's first selection, and they've been heavily linked to him. But I think stylistically... He makes sense for them. They have a really good knack with VFL mature age players. And I can see him coming in and playing a role straight away. They're looking for four and a half players. I think they'd be happy to take the punt at 36, to be honest. Richmond then bid on Gold Coast at fourth academy player in Will Graham. And he will join the Gold Coast Suns at pick 37. And this is where the Gold Coast Suns bow out. Okay, I had a little bit of a slip up there. I said that Richmond bid on Gold Coast. Uh, the reason is because of this selection, 38, this selection actually belongs to uh, Essendon. But I've, I've made my own little fun live trade here because I have the logic that Essendon will probably take their three selections and Richmond probably wants an extra selection, uh, obviously having some uh, depleted access to young talent. So the hypothetical trade that is not based on any news reports, I have Essendon trading away pick 38, which they don't want to, want to use. Richmond will give up their 2025 third rounder and get back Essendon's 2025 fourth rounder. So Essendon offload pick 38, which they won't use, and they upgrade their fourth rounder next year to, S uh, to Richmond's third round pick. So Richmond are on the clock here. And I have them taking sliding Ruckman Mitch Edwards. Um, they obviously just lost Ivan Soldo. I think Edwards is a good value selection at this pick anyway. It adds a tall to their balance. I think this would be a great pick for Richmond. They also probably have in mind West Coast have the next selection, and there would be some urgency for them to trade for this pick to get Mitch Edwards. At pick 39, the West Coast Eagles having added Harley Reid and Daniel Curtin, how exciting, and Lance Collard. Wow, what a dream draft for West Coast. <laughs> At pick 39, I've got them taking Will Lorenz from Victoria, an outside mid, 186 centimeters, very smooth, classy player that I think seems like a West Coast player. And I did read recently that they have met with him in recent times. When I watched him, I was like, I can see the Eagles picking him. So that is my call for pick 39, Will Lawrence. At pick 40, I think this will be St Kilda's final selection. They've taken Darcy Wilson. They've taken Luan Lual. Could they mix it up with a tall potentially, but they might go just best available. As I don't know how many good talls are left at this point. And a player that they've been linked to is Tarkin O'Leary, a small wingman out of Victoria. They're looking to you know bolster their midfield to some extent. Wilson and O'Leary are outside mids. Luol shores up their defense. And maybe they just look for talls another year, but that's St Kilda done for this draft. So Richmond will then have their third and what I think is their final selection, having taken Jack Delaney at 33 and they've taken Mitch Edwards, a Ruckman. They have pick 41 now to consider probably the midfield. And they've got a bit of a bargain here in Clay Hall, I reckon, a West Australian midfielder from Peel Thunder. And uh, he's one of the better performed midfielders for WA in the draft, uh, sorry, in the national championships. And I think at 41, this is a good bargain. So he's got to slide past West Coast at 39 but Richmond add a young West Australian midfielder. Now, Melbourne currently hold pick 42, nominally speaking, but Geelong are another club that could look to live trade and, and perhaps they, they will do some that I haven't seen coming. But with their need to fill list spots and take four or five selections in this year's draft, they don't quite have the list. They don't have the draft picks to do that. So I've got them trading 2025's round three selection for Melbourne's 42 in this year's draft. Now that might be a bit of a downgrade for Melbourne, but it gives them some draft collateral next year and Melbourne openly won't take this pick. So Melbourne will exit the draft with uh, just the two players, reportedly, and Geelong still have value picking in this range. So they take George Stevens, a big-bodied inside mid from Victoria. 
Fields, uh, you know, continues that sort of list transition that Geelong are going through and, and building more young mids to the mix. Is he too similar to someone like a Mitch Nevitt who they've already got? Maybe. But I think this is probably about right on value. GWS then have their uh, second selection. This one would ordinarily be their last one, but having traded uh, pick seven out of this year's draft, I've got them taking uh, two more picks. But in this one, they'll take Luke Lloyd, a key forward out of Victoria. Who doesn't want a young key forward on the list? And GWS probably need one. Having They did take Cadman last year, but beyond that, uh, you know, with Hogan being like 29 next year, still some uncertainty around Riccardi. I think adding a key forward prospect for them would be a fine result. Fremantle then, again, will take a key forward prospect. And this is because Archer Reed has slid a little bit further than expected. And he will go to Fremantle uh, as a 203 centimeter key forward out of Victoria. Again, a bit of a longer term prospect that one, but Fremantle are in a position probably to look for a top forward that they can develop for a few years. Then Brisbane have this second and final selection. And I've got them taking Western Australia's Cohen Sanchez. I wanted to go two tall picks for Brisbane, but I think a small forward is probably still something they could add. And at 45, I think Sanchez is good value. And they do draft out of WA. So is that two WA guys I got for them? Yeah, Zach Ostelski and Cohen Sanchez. So well done, Brisbane. At pick 46, I have the biggest slider in this year's draft. And this one, I just feel like a little bit of a, I think it's a bit of a roughie. It's twofold. Actually, I'll say who it is first. North Melbourne, with their final selection, will take Archie Roberts, a running defender out of Victoria. He has slid a long way. First of all, he slid in general in the perception around the draft and media rankings. But there's also a lot of running defenders in this year's draft. And over time, ty- types like Giath, Luam and Luau, they have sort of come to the fore more and it's competitive for that spot. And, and clubs with several picks don't want to necessarily take two running defenders. So I think that's part of the reason why Roberts, in my opinion, might slide. And it is a bit of a rough call because I would probably have to be happy with him at 29 at West Coast, hypothetically. But I've got North Melbourne taking Angus, uh, sorry, Archie Roberts, which leaves West Coast final selection. They'll take five now, and this is 47. And they'll take Angus Hasty, someone I've had them taking previously, uh, for the similar player to Roberts, actually, who is a uh, really aggressive running half back. And that sort of talks to West Coast continuing to sort of build to a new game style, a more modern game style. GWS exit the draft with Tasmanian midfielder Jack Callanan on a best available uh, basis. Fremantle will be lucky to have at pick 49 Cooper Simpson available to them. A little bit of a slide, he could go earlier than this. But while they're not looking for midfielders as such, Cooper Simpson is good enough, in my opinion, or exciting enough to tempt them in this selection. Hawthorne then have two picks in a row. They'll round out their draft. They're going to take Nathan Philactides, another slider, as a small defender. Small defenders tend to get taken a little bit later on average. And uh, we haven't really heard too much about Philactides. Philactides? God, what is wrong with me? Philactides, um, for a little while now. Is it a need for Hawthorne? Probably not. But they've got a well-rounded draft hall now. And um, I still think he has potential at AFL level. And finally, they'll take Culture Deal with their final selection, a father-son player that they've committed to taking with their final selection. So a key forward, a key back, a small forward in Nick Watson, and a small defender in Phil Actides. The Bulldogs then... Um, so yeah, to clarify with the, the Hawks and the Bulldogs picks, uh, I think I had the three picks in the 40s being absorbed for Hawthorne and the four picks in the 50s absorbed by the Western Bulldogs. So a lot of these picks have um, been sort of vacuumed up and the order is changing a little bit now. But the Bulldogs will take two more selections. Bodie Ryan from South Australia, a 187 centimetre defender. Then Carlson with their final selection will take Matthew Carroll, an 188 centimetre defender. So it's a very competitive position in this year's draft. Matthew Carroll goes to the, uh, the Blues where he has been publicly linked. Uh, will Brown will then join the Western Bulldogs with their final selection, adding another midfielder to join Sanders in that mix. They've added a key forward, a running defender, and two midfielders. And Will Brown is a decent one from Sandringham. Then Port Adelaide with their one selection will take Will Patton, best available player to some extent, but he's also a running defender from South Australia, so maybe it's a lazy connection there, but I do like the look of him. Geelong then will, if assuming they take five selections, which is not a given, they could go four, but for the sake of this mock, I'll just have them taking the two final selections because everyone else has passed out now of this draft. And I'll give them Kane McCullough from South Australia, another midfielder. Is it the right mix of them? Maybe not, but they'll, they'll back it up with Harvey Johnston, a running sort of forward mid um, out of Victoria as well. So there you have it, guys. That is my attempt at the final mock draft predictions before I do my day two one, uh, because of, of course I'm going to get these wrong. So let me know in the comments what you think. I think this one will cop a lot of criticism. Bring it on, baby. 
Uh, but I've tried to have a bit of fun with it. So hopefully it was a little bit fun to watch. Uh, and I think there will be some salty fans out there. And there will be criticism of the trades I've decided to do. But that's show business, baby. Um, but thank you for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing if you have. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.